No? You mean I get to ask it to you right here in front of everyone? <laughs> what are you afraid of? Storms. Storms? To be afraid. Yeah? Storms. Storms? And nothing else? No? Sometimes dying. Sometimes dying. Afraid of pain? No? No? Okay. How about you? Pain. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but that's a question that is often asked. <laughs> and it's interesting you came up with, with some of the very things I've, I've heard. Um, there are a lot of other things, though, that you may not have just thought about, because you were just asked. You haven't thought about it. But I want you to just kind of go back, maybe in your mind, because uh, you can't do it really. Remember when you were really little? Do you remember your mom saying, don't touch that, it's hot? Remember that? Didn't that kind of cause you to be a little bit afraid? And so from then on, unless you learn the hard way, which is you put your hand <laughs> on the stove, and then of course, then you were might have been afraid of getting burned, right? Well, here in Pretty Prairie, there aren't busy streets, right? There are no traffic lights, so you don't have that to, to contend with. But most children, when they're growing up, like, you know, real young, they want to play out in the yard. And the ball goes in the street. And what does mom yell, or dad, or someone? Don't go out. Yeah, sometimes very hard, right? So the fear of getting hurt, I don't know whether it's the fear of getting hurt because it hasn't happened, or it's the voice that you hear. You know. right. Well, I, I want to tell you something. When I was a lifeguard, and I was a lifeguard for many years, okay? Various times I was a lifeguard in every place except the ocean. Um, I often lifeguarded when we went to camp um, with kids. So the thing that I did the most, you think I saved kids and people? Do you think I actually had to go and get them out of the water? Not right. You are so right. How did you know that? <laughs> no, I never did a water rescue. Oh, but you know what I did a lot of? I blew my whistle a lot. I blew that whistle more than once. I would blow it very hard and I would point my finger, you, get out of the deep, because they weren't swimmers. So the thing about it is we are often warned, rather harshly, not to do something. And then the hope is, the hope for me was that they don't do it again. <laughs> because, you know what happens, sometimes kids do get in trouble in water. So the only rescue I ever had to make was right underneath my chair. There was a young girl, and she couldn't swim, and she wasn't yelling. Let me tell you this, people that are drowning, children drowning, don't yell. They don't yell for help. So I saw her in trouble and I just reached down. She had long hair. I pulled her up by her hair. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. She will never, ever get in that deep water. See what I told her? Learn to swim. I have lessons. Come see me. <laughs> so the thing is, we are warned you know, not to do certain things. And if we heed the warning, we're going to be OK. But there is this other thing that we we were mentioning. Most of us are afraid of dying. It's, the, it's, it's a fear that is present in all of us. And a fear of pain is very real. So in many ways, pain can be our teacher, right? We don't want to get burned, so we stay away from getting too close to the fire or the gas or whatever. So that's a warning for us. 
And in many ways, that's something we need to remember. It is very good that we have bodies that we live in that receive those warnings. We don't want to get hurt. We don't want to get run over by a car or anything like that. So there is a part of us, the fear is actually good. It's good to have some fear. And when you have some more time to think about it, you realize. I, the, I, I'm sure that you can think of many times when you're governed by fear, ruled by a certain fear. And it is good because it keeps you out of trouble, right? So thank you for listening. You might want to think about that a little bit, okay? And and the fear is can be very good. Okay? All right, thank you. He got from his dad quite a bit of money in order to travel to Europe. Okay, now you know he was in Sweden and he wanted to go to England. His first journey. Well, Sweden was, and Denmark, were in a state of war. There were a lot of wars during Swedenborg's time. So he was on the ship for quite some time, and the news had traveled that there was an outbreak of, I forget the disease, I may have to look this up. Uh, one second. I bet it's cholera. I'm not absolutely sure. So they, so I guess I will read it. Because I don't want to get the wrong thing. Was it cholera? I, it might have been cholera. So when it docked in London, that's the ship, the travelers found the news of the plague in Sweden had preceded them, and the vessel was quarantined for six weeks. Oh. Can you imagine being on a boat for six weeks after a journey? Swedenborg, this is the word, I love this word, audaciously <laughs> went ashore on a boat that belonged to some visiting Swedes, he had a fool, but was arrested and detained. He was nearly hanged. Folks, what does this remind you of? <laughs> of course, she wore that she mouthed that it was Ebola. It's, for us, it is Ebola. Well, folks, he had no fear whatsoever. As I said, he was a brash young man. He was kind of full of himself at this age. I think he was like 18, if that much. Might have even been younger. So why am I telling you all this? Because this very act that happened with Swedenborg is part of his great transformate, transformative experience. Now you probably remember this, right? His first transformative experience occurs, and he writes about it in his dream journal. Um, he, he falls on the floor, and he is lifted up by by the Lord Jesus, which he understands to be the Lord Jesus Christ. In his bosom is the word. He's lifted up. And he, he, you know, the first thing that happened is he was on the ground. He fell prostrate before this heavenly being. And it wasn't until he is lifted up in his bosom that he knows that it's the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what the Lord says to him? You know what? Do you all know that story? Where's your ticket? Where's your ticket of health? It refers back to what happened to him when he didn't have it and he nearly hung for it because he didn't have his health certificate. That's a quite an amazing story. And you know his answer? Lord, you know. Lord, you know. It's that utter humility in God's protection. And that's what he felt 
that was his first transformative experience. He had many others, but that was the first. And imagine this. It connects back to a time when he, he did no warning whatsoever. So I want to get to this very important point about our fears. Yes, we all have fears. I have my share of them. But it, it is usually unreasonable. That's the thing about fear. In fact, I can tell you that in, because I, you already know I was a lifeguard for many years and taught lifeguarding. The thing you want to get through to lifeguards, and they're usually very young, not like me. <laughs> they're very young, 17, 16, is that the act of drowning is you become absolutely without reason. You lose all reasoning. You cannot talk to somebody when they're drowning. You know, you've got to literally save them. As I said, I the only real rescue that I've ever done, well, there was one other, and that was just lifting somebody up in the water. That was one of my swim students. It's simply you have to get a hold of them. And that's what rescue is. A water rescue involves putting a very firm arm on that person. Now, if they're struggling, you really have to hold them tight. You can't talk to them. They have no reasoning, because what do they want? A drowning person, there's only one thing they want. Do you know what that is? Air. Air. There ain't any down there. <laughs> so, what they want is air. So if their head is out of the water, and that's what you want in the rescue, is to make sure their head is out of the water. And that firm hold is what gives them a sense of, I'm okay, I'm gonna be all right. And so that's, that's the love that God offers us. When we are fearful, it's usually unreasonable. You have to, to get to a point where you calm down, where you might do some breathing, meditative breathing, taking breaths in and out to allow your body to become calm. Then the voice of reason may take over. And what may be even more important is to have a sense that you're going to be open to trust in God's holy love, which is always there. But here's where that passage comes in. If you are fearful, you cannot progress. Remember, I mean, you're going to drown in, in the case of drowning. If you just remain fearful and nobody comes to your rescue, you're going to drown. But if you begin to regain your calm composure, you may start to remember, yes, I don't understand what's going on, but I trust. I trust in God. So the fear fades, and God's love may come through to you, and then you can progress. And it may involve getting more knowledge. Because you see, once your reasoning is back, when I am sick and I don't know what's going on with me, usually <laughs> I end up Googling my symptoms. <laughs> then I learn. Once I begin to learn what's going on with me, I am okay. And usually that's why we have tests so that we can learn you know, what is going on with us. Um, the fear may still be with you, but there is less fear almost in the ratio. The more you know, the less fear you may have. Now, I, I don't want to take this too far, this metaphor, because let's face it, those, are, those folks who are 
receiving some very dire diagnosis, the fear may continue to come back up. That's where you really, really have to get inside of what that message here is. Lord is with you always, encompassing you with love. And you know, that's not a reason. That's, that goes beyond reasoning. It is much deeper, it is, it is within the core of you. And that, to access that, takes worship. I don't mean necessarily coming to church, but it's an inside job. It's an inside worship of giving yourself into God's care. So that's my prayer for all of us, that in spite of our fears, that we understand that fear is and can be a part of life, but it doesn't have to rule us. It doesn't have to govern us may lead us to let go and let God be with us. Let God's mercy cover us. His love and mercy. May it be so in our lives. 